For the next three weeks, I'll be traveling the Central American country of Belize. Starting in Kikoka and enjoying the island's life. We have made it to Kikoka. Welcome to Belize. We're going to be doing a full day of snorkeling with caveman snorkel tours, swimming alongside sharks. That was, as they would say in Belize, unbelievable. From there, I'll be doing a three-day boat cruise that sails south through Belize's barrier reef and staying on two private islands. Call it home for the next three days. Wild dolphins, wild dolphins. We have the entire island to ourselves. I feel like I'm in a dream. Check out where we're staying for night number two. Tobacco Island. Then, I'll make my way into Hopkins. That cold water got me. From Hopkins, I'll head into San Ignacio. We're gonna check out the Mayan ruin of Zanantanich. Then, I'll be concluding my trip in San Pedro. There was this whole world that I've never seen before. On this journey, I'll be showing you some of the ups and downs of my backpacking experience. We're gonna hitchhike. I've never hitchhiked before in my life. I would not be able to continue this trip if it were not for the people that I've met here. To the amazing sights, adventures, and people I'll meet along the way. All right, <laughs> Join me as I go backpacking Belize. You better believe it. <laughs>So back in 2020, Belize was one of five countries I had booked cancel on me. And although it did open up the following year, it was without tourism. And if I had to think of anything positive that came from this is that it made me have to research alternative countries to go to, which led me to places like Albania and Nicaragua. Both, by the way, turned out to be very underrated, amazing countries. Ah, this is so cold! Ah! Now it's January 2022 and Belize is fully open with all the tours that I want to do being available. And it's the only country that I know of so far that allows you to enter with just a rapid test, which is completely free. Most countries require PCR tests taken within 72 hours, sometimes 48 hours, sometimes even 24 hours before flying. And it's just been such an expensive pain to have to pay $250 for a PCR test every time I travel just to have guaranteed results within a few hours. So I can't tell you how relieved I am to be able to put that money towards something else like the activities I'm gonna be doing while I'm out there. So there's nothing more to say except that I'm excited to be making Belize my first trip of 2022 and I can't wait to experience the islands, the sights, and the adventures. So let's go. From New York, I'll be landing in Belize City where the hostel has arranged for a driver to take me to the ferry to Kikoko. Got my ticket, now I just have to take this ferry to Kikoko. When I saw Kikoko in the distance, it's like, yes, the adventure is starting. We have made it to Kikoka. Welcome to Belize. Morning, morning, morning. How you doing? All right, good morning. Day number two from Kikoka. Didn't do much last night after landing. You know, the mantra of this island is go slow, and that's exactly what I did. Kind of got caught up hanging out with some of the people from the hostel, and Sam, who works at the hostel, took me out for, actually she treated me to my first Belizean barbecue, which was amazing. And I think for today what we're gonna do is take out one of these canoes and paddle out to a neighboring island called Coco King Island, I think it's called. Yeah, that's the plan for today, so far. All right, so this is Sam, everybody. Hi, so what's the plan for today? Going We're gonna go to Coco King. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. So should I sit in the middle? No, you should sit behind and sit in the middle. These are yours. Wait, 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 don't make the board. I know. Thank you, see you later. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is gonna be a workout for sure. With a sense of adventure and the spirits high, we should make it to Coco King in no time. When you said you couldn't paddle, I didn't think it was going to be that bad. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I told you to take the ferry. I wanted the experience. Well, you got an experience. Now we're stuck here with the boat waiting for somebody to come and get it. That was a massive, epic fail. We did our best. It's, it should only be about a 15-minute ride, but the waves were pushing us back. <laughs> Shit, this is hard. So we had to park the boat over here. And then she's calling somebody from the hospital to come pick it up, and then we'll just take the ferry, which is free, to go to Coco King Island. We're doing it? Ah, you're in my life saving. Yeah? Let's, go. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's go. This is Chris, everybody. Oh He's the uh, rescue team. <laughs> so we're going to get back on to the kayak, and then me and Chris are going to do it, and then Sam's just going to watch and maybe film so we can do it right. Let's do it. All right. We're going to be fine. We can do it. We were. I mean, you made it halfway. Look how smooth this is going now. Whoa! You're we're making progress. Thanks, Chris. How far we got? Look. I was like, not even two minutes. Whatever I told you, just paddle. I think he's stalking them this way. No. He has a sexy walk. It's <laughs> <laughs> so peaceful here. Not that many people around. This has been a great start to the day. We were able to enjoy Coco King and leave just as the tourists started coming in. We then checked out the nearby attraction of feeding tarpoons. Lunchtime. You gonna try first? No! <laughs> <laughs> you have to do it though. Okay. I have to do it. Yep. It's not, it's not it's my fun, it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, they don't have anything. Yeah. The inside of their mouth is like rough sandpaper. No, Chris! Your hand has to be away uh, from the deck and like a foot over the water. Like that? Lower. Lower. Lower, lower, lower. 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 Yeah. Lower? No, that's good. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Bam! That's how it's done. <laughs> that was pretty fun. Oh, there's a hole in the boat. There's a hole in the front. <laughs> you made it, man. Productive day. Later that evening, we met back with Chris, who invited us for a sunset cruise. When Chris said he was going to do a sunset cruise, I thought we were going to be riding on that little dinghy. I didn't think we were going to be on this. This is amazing. Sam and Chris really made the day, and it's moments just like that of why I love traveling. All right, just back from the Sunset Cruise, but the fun continues. Let's go, trivia! To the sports bar! This is, this is Simone, guys. Uh, hey, she, guys. She runs Bella. She yes, owns she Bella. And We're uh, getting everyone together for a photo. To do some uh, trivia. <laughs> That's what we're doing tonight. And the song Chocolate Salty Balls by Chef, the South Park song. First place, that was with 31 points. You guys were tied with 31 points. Our team lost. All right, good morning. Day number three and exciting day today. We're going to be doing a full day of snorkeling with caveman snorkel tours. I have no fear. The caveman is here. <laughs> What's your name, man? 
My real name is Harrison Cadle. Okay. My nickname is The Caveman, and my business name is The Caveman. What happened, the reason why I got that name, I got lost in a cave when I was a young man growing up. And the people <laughs> that stuck with me ever since. And how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this job over 38 years, my brother. I think it's like seven different stops, and hopefully we'll get to see some sea turtles, stingrays, manatees. Hopefully we get to see manatees. So what are you guys hoping to see out there today? Manatees. Uh -huh. And the highlight of the day is swimming alongside sharks. That's right, sharks. This is why I signed up for this trip. It was raining earlier, but now the sky is clearing up, so I think it's going to be a perfect, fun day. Thank you. See you Have soon. a great day. We'll talk... See you soon, my brother. Thank you. All right, and joining me today is Jesse. He's from the hostel. And we got Jonas. Um, crew members on board, my name is David. I'll be your captain and guide for today. Uh, that's my first mate. He's Angel. We set up for our first location, but not before learning about how Key Coca's The Split got its name. Just so you guys know how The Split came about, guys, right? What happened before 61, 1961, these islands was joined together, right? And for yeah. these fishermen to get on the west side of the island, what they had to do, they had to go all the way around, right? Burn a lot of fuel, guys, and a lot of time. So what they did was they dug a small little canal where just the boat could go through, right? To get on the west side. But what happened in 1961, we had a powerful hurricane, Billy's ever faced, category five. Came and kind of widened the area a bit, right? And then boats started going through with all the waves causing erosions on both sides. It goes from about like 25, 30 feet down in the middle of the split there, guys. Hey guys, this is where we get a sightings of the manatees. It's coming up again. See, see the big white? I unfortunately couldn't spot one, so we moved on to the tarpoon feeding I was at the day before. These are known as tarpons. You might say they're pretty big, but they're still juveniles. They get up to eight feet in length, weighing almost over 300 pounds. If you want to There you go! <laughs> that was awesome! You feed them frigging birds, right? Woo. Magic touch! There's nothing in the sky, right? Oh! <laughs> oh. All right, here we go. Next stop was Coral Garden, a top tourist destination for snorkeling and underwater life, as this area is a series of colorful coral throughout the coast of Belize's Barrier Reef. That was magical. For years I've been trying to chase sea turtles. You guys ready to move on and check out some more cool stuff? Let's do it. where David was coming out of the underwater tunnel, my GoPro battery was going low, so I didn't film any of the other stops so that I had enough juice to film the location that I was looking forward to most. Our final stop was Shark Alley, where we'll get the opportunity to swim alongside them. Wow. It's a lot of sharks. Wow. Yeah. So these sharks that we're all looking at, guys, these are what we call the nurse sharks, okay? Very friendly and harmless sharks. You jump in, it's like, holy they're right there, right in front of your face. One actually swam right up to me. And as I was swimming, just accidentally touched one. And I kind of freaked out because it's like, who knows, he might just go shark on me. Yeah, needless to say, that was very exciting to do. Oh, that was awesome. That was the highlight of the day. Wow. So that was, as they would say in Belize, unbelievable. Best thing I've done in Kikoka. Tons of underwater wildlife that I'd never seen before. Got to see sea turtles, stingrays. We didn't get to see manatees. That's very rare. It's nature, it's the luck of the draw. It is what it is. We still had a wonderful day. And the highlight was the sharks. Like swimming alongside with the sharks was unbelievable. I really feel like this trip is really starting to take off and it's gonna get even better because I am now heading to Ragamuffin Tours to do the orientation because I'm gonna be doing a three-day island hopping tour with them. And yeah, I feel like this trip is really starting to take off. All right, good morning. It's 6.45 and I'm heading 
to Ragamuffins to meet up for our three-day island hopping cruise. Yeah, it's been a great three days here in Kikolka. Last night, Jonas, Jesse, and Sam, we said our final goodbyes, we made a wishing lantern. Did you really put, I like rim jobs? Yeah, and my autogram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stayed up pretty late. Hey, <laughs> oh my God, look at it. Oh, the wow. is on fire. I love this island. I made a lot of really great friends here, but now it's time to move on to the next leg of this trip. is going to be our vessel for the next three days, so call it home for the next three days. This three-day cruise will sail south through the inner part of Belize's Barrier Reef while camping overnight on two private islands. We were cruising along, and just when the adventure started and felt it couldn't get any better, Mark spotted one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. Wild dolphins! Wild dolphins! Look, they're feeling playful. Seeing dolphins swim alongside us was unreal. Welcome to Belize, guys. We even got to watch Mark catch his dinner for tonight. He shot it really close to the rocks, so he had a little bit of trouble getting it out. Yeah, but the dolphins wish I ever got it. It'll be the most delicious. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we just did a bit of snorkeling. Now we're off to our first stop, which is Ronnie from Key Island. We need to pass exactly between these two islands. So this is the international channel. Grab key, English key. Back in the time when you were a sailor, if you had a little bit of stripes, you were not just the first mate or the deckhand. They give you a proper burial on that island. But then if you were just um, the deckhand, they just toss you over the water and you become food for the sharks. So I was right, Golf key was a cemetery. Yeah. yeah. That's where they put, that's what we call for the night. A little island right there. I need to bring my binoculars. <laughs> All right, guys, this is it. Wonderful island. I'm stopping tonight. We quickly settled in and afterwards was treated to a massive, delicious feast. And this is a fish we caught. Share the love, all right? Yeah, man, everybody. morning. Yesterday was an awesome day. We arrived a little bit later than expected with the current pushing against us. When we arrived we had to pitch up our tents pretty quickly before it got too dark and then we had a beautiful dinner. But the best part is we have the entire island to ourselves. I mean literally there is nobody else out here but us and that is just... I feel like I'm in a dream. And this is Belize. No signal. Not a single bar. This has been fantastic. Time for breakfast. This is Callan, guys, 20 years old. Thanks. It has super smile, killing it in the kitchen. I told him because three other people canceled on this trip that I have no reservations about having seconds and thirds, and I've been doing just that. We packed up to leave just as a new group were making their way in. It was a luxury having this island to ourselves, but it was on to our next location. See those beauties. <laughs> Don't look at this one. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody is starving. <laughs> yeah, man, we got the freshly jack and the snappers. If you don't know where you are, we're still in Belize. <laughs> better believe it, right? Better believe it. Right? We had more than enough, but it was a bonus when Owen caught one of his own. Come on, brother. You've been waiting two days. Tell Caleb, get us a rum, a bottle of rum. Alright, we got dinner, Barracuda! Nice These job! These right here, there's nothing to play with, they're sharper than razor blades. 
So we're gonna marinate it? Apparently, using rum is a more humane way of preparing a fish. What's up, what's up, what's up? Alright, check out where we're staying for night number two. Tobacco Island. Let's go exploring around this tiny island. Um, mask will be on at all times in public in this area. Belize has very strict rules. Uh, they'll fine you if 500 Belize dollars, which is about 250 US, if they catch you without a mask in public. And we're already at the other end of the island. <laughs> this is fantastic. This has been such a relaxing part of the trip, but it still feels like I'm on an adventure. And the group's been really great, like everyone's so super chill, and I'm so glad it was like that and not some kind of like party boat. <laughs> if you don't know where you're at, we're still in Belize, in Tobacco Key, so you better believe it. This is your fish team in business. Oh. Oh. Which fish is it? That's the, um, the big jack, mark shot, and some of the barracudas and a hogfish. Okay. Beautiful. Good morning. We're up for another beautiful sunrise, and it's pretty easy waking up early when you hear so many various birds calling out at five in the morning. Morning. But I have absolutely no complaints. I feel like I'm on Gilligan's Island. I love this place. It was our last morning of the cruise, but we still had a few more stops to make throughout the day. So right now we're at the Manatee Reserve. These mystic manatees have been evading us this entire trip, so hopefully we get to spot them. We can actually snorkel with them, because this is a very protected area, but hopefully we can spot them. Oh, well, the manatee wins again this time. They've evaded us. We saw, well, They've spotted a couple of them, but they only take quick breaths and then they go right back in. And now it started raining. After having no luck with the manatees, we checked out one more snorkeling location. and by far the best. Definitely my favorite. What a great way to end this portion of the trip. We then went to a sandbar as our last impressive location. All right, we're about to hang out and have a few drinks in the middle of the ocean. At the end, Captain Rob gave a really nice speech, but unfortunately you couldn't hear any of it because of the strong winds. We made our way back to Tobacco Key to get our things before saying our final goodbyes. All right, all right, <laughs> Captain Rob, Mark, Brett, and Callan made the entire experience really enjoyable. The staff saw us off as we boarded the water taxi to take us to Dangriga. Bye-bye. There. <laughs> it would be a short 30-minute ride. At Dangriga, the tour arranged for a van to take us to the bus station, but seeing as most of the group were headed to San Ignacio, we all decided to chip in and have the drivers take us the entire way, leaving me in Hopkins. All right, I'm in Hopkins now in this really cool hostel called the Funky Dodo. Now, typically I don't use hostels, but when I was researching Belize, it just kind of seems suited for this very budgeted backpacking style of travel. So I went with it, particularly because I didn't want my first travel in 2022 right out the box to be really expensive because I have other plans of places that I want to go to throughout the year. And uh, so far, the backpacking kind of style has been working out. It's been pretty good. The only thing I can't get used to is the cold water. <laughs> but luckily, 
this place offers solar powered hot water, which is really good because uh, I really need one. And cold is the only thing I, I can't do. Anyway, I'm here for a couple of days, so let's see what Hopkins has to offer. That evening, I met up with a few guests from the hostel to a restaurant giving a local drum performance. Good morning, day number two from Hopkins. Today is gonna to be an adventure. Well, this whole trip's been an adventure, but different kind of adventure because I'm at the Bocamina National Park where I'm gonna be doing some hiking and then rappelling down a waterfall. I haven't done rappelling in years, so looking forward to this. You guys made it. <laughs> yeah. Rappelling <laughs> area. <laughs> Looks like we got a ways Welcome to go. Welcome to my gym. <laughs> Check this out. We're three quarters of the way up to the top, but we're gonna take about a five minute break to enjoy this. Whoa, whoa. It's cold, actually. Three, nice. After a refreshing dip, we were set to start our repel, 150 feet down Antelope Falls. All right, that was awesome. So the first one is a 90 degree lean back off rip which is crazy because that one's only 45 degrees and i didn't do too bad until i got caught up under the waterfall and that glass of cold water hit me <laughs> and it shocked me and i just kind of lost my footing but i got my bearings and i made it down there it is it got a little bit for a second <laughs> oh that water that cold water got me <laughs> <laughs> i kept wanting to sprinkle off like mission impossible but our guide specifically instructed us not to Bocawina was great, but the town of Hopkins itself felt more suited as just a layover. So Hopkins has sort of been a bust for me. I feel like there's not much going on in this town. I don't know if I'm here at the wrong time, but it definitely doesn't have the vibrance of Kikoka. I mean, I did get to do the Bocawina National Park, which was awesome, but last night it rained and it's been windy and rainy. So even going to the beach, which is right behind us, is a no-go for me. And it sucks because I only have a limited time here. This is my last free day to do any kind of activities. And that's it. Tomorrow, early in the morning, I'm heading to San Ignacio. And hopefully there'll be better weather, more activities to do, and hopefully more people to meet and hang out with. Well, because it is Sunday, I didn't realize that there is no local buses running. So what I and a couple of people that I met at the hostel last night are doing is we're gonna hitchhike to get to the highway. I've never hitchhiked before in my life, but apparently this is a very safe and common way of doing things in Belize. What I have to do is get to the highway, catch a bus to the bus station, and then another bus, express bus, to get to San Ignacio. This is definitely enhancing this entire backpacking experience. Oh, perfect. We were luckily picked up by a very sweet lady. I didn't get her name, but she took us halfway where I luckily caught another ride just in time to catch my bus. So where are you going to San Ignacio? Yes. Okay. It was a four hour journey going from Hopkins to Belmopan Station, then to transfer to another bus headed to San Ignacio. All right, just got to San Ignacio. The hostel's about a five minute walk away. Wasn't too bad. All in total was two buses and about two and a half hours. Hey. Everyone's so nice around here. And uh, so I'm gonna get to the hostel, settle in, and then see what's available around here. I'm staying at the old house hostel where I was reunited with a recent acquaintance. Look who's back, guys. Jesse's back. Remember him? To rim jobs. <laughs> yeah, the rim jobs send us. <laughs> I am with Michelle and Jesse. Jesse, who I met in Kikolka. We're gonna go check out a Mayan ruin. Mayan ruins are a big part of Belizean culture, and there's so many of them here but you figure you gotta at least see one. So we're gonna see the one that's closest to our hostel, which is about a 15 minute walk from here. We're right there. Okay, so this is Halaza H. Kahal Pej is one of the oldest Maya sites in Western Belize. It is said to be home for a Maya family of elite stature. Its construction dates to the classic period with evidence showing habitation going as far as 1200 BC. Excavation started in 1988, being abandoned since the 9th century for reasons unknown. This is where we store Jesse for being Canadian. This definitely jail cell. This is vandalized. That's a New York City apartment size right there. <laughs> I think this is more New York City apartment. The 
workout for the day. Old school Stairmaster. Later that afternoon, a few of us decided to head to a local spot nearby known as the Branch Mouth River. Like I just got here, didn't think I'd be jumping off bridges. So cool. The next day, Gavin, Jessica, and I visited the Iguana Research Center and met up with Nigel, who taught us why they've become so endangered and the importance of their conservation. How old are these ones? The one you're stroking, that's a guy. He's 11 years old. This one here, she's 13 years old. That female is also 13 years old. How long do they live? Mm, 20 to 25 years. They're basically becoming an endangered species because people choose to eat them so much. They call them bamboo chicken. The chickens of the trees, it's a delicacy, you know, to eat the guanas, but primarily the females, they'll have like about 20 to 90 eggs. People love their eggs, so when people target them, it's the females they want. One iguana could be sold like about 20, 30 bucks. People sell them because it's an easy way to make an income. You know, they just sit on a tree collecting sunlight and they're right in the open. You don't even have to have a gun to hunt them. It's a slingshot. So when people hunt them, shoot them in the head, they fall out of the tree, bag them up, tie them up, go and try to sell them. Our project here has been here since 1996. What we do here is releasing of iguanas, rehabilitation of iguanas, we try to repopulate the species and we do as much of the education as we can. Going to schools, fairs, expos and rallies, we try to teach the locals, you know, not to harm them, not to kill them. If they see an injured one, they can call me, I will go get them, I bring them here, rehabilitate them. If they're friendly, I keep them. If they're too aggressive, they are sent out into the wild. Except that female there, the one that has one missing arm, right? Oh. Sexy Lexi, she couldn't survive in the wild. And she's 22 years old, right? So she could not be placed back into the wild because she's pretty much at the end of her life. Keeping her here is a little bit better. I'm gonna pick her up and I'm gonna put her in your arms. You're gonna hold a hand in her armpits and a hand underneath her legs. Oh, good job. Come on, just release your hand. There you go. <laughs> Do they right. fight? Uh, they should. Right? They, they should bite. Function. This is not real. Like you don't do this again. All right? You see one in the wild, don't do none of that. No. Yeah, ever. Like, if you try to do that, it will bite you. Here. Or poop on you. That could happen. Then Nigel showed us the young iguanas. How many babies do you have, you said? 47 babies. They are very green, very colorful. And this green color will help them to camouflage. A uh, cool seed. Oh my god. How many iguanas can I fit on my head? When do you release these? All of them get released on private properties where it's gonna be safe from hunters, you know? The biggest threat is the locals. Predators, it's all natural. They do belong here in our ecosystem, so they're native predators that will kill them. But humans do selective hunting. Go, Up to the... Oh, now they're all fighting over that leaf. Oh no. <laughs> I started a riot. Oh no. <laughs> There's about five male iguanas for every female iguana in the wild nowadays. It's a horrible ratio. And that's all because people choose to hunt only the females and not the guys. That was really fun, Nigel. Thank you. You're welcome. Very informative, too. We got to learn a little bit about conservation of the no, environment here about, today. Uh, we yeah, got to hold some, pet some. Some even climbed up in my so head. I, I hope you had a good one, and I'll see you next time. Oh. Peace. So I've been wanting to talk about this for a couple of days and I'm not really sure how I'm going to articulate this because in my years of travel there have been many things that have gone wrong and I've never talked about them and I've never shown them in my videos um, but there's no way I cannot talk about this and give it some context because the reality is is that I would not be able to continue this trip if it were not for the people that I've met here. Now in my past travels I've dropped cameras 
broken lenses, broken ND filters. Our last photo together ended horribly when the camera fell. The lens is still good. And let's not forget about the three drones I've either broken or lost. I think it's still good. It's inevitable. It's part of the experience when you're doing run and gun style traveling. But two of the worst things that could possibly happen have happened simultaneously in one trip. The first one being that I was a victim of identity theft. I got that notification while I was in Kikoka. So the footage that you'll see of me kayaking back from Coco King Island, I was actually on the phone with my bank. So you can just imagine me paddling out and all you hear is, please hold for the next customer service. And all I'm thinking is, I can't let this ruin my trip. I'm not gonna let this get me down. I am, lady. Basically, the bank wanted to cancel my car, and I said, you can't cancel my car. This is the only car I'm going to have for the next three weeks. So the only solution was to lock my card, and when I'm about to make a purchase, unlock it, and then when I make my purchase, lock it back. And that's going to hold me over till I get home and, you know, and get a new car. But then, a few days ago, while I was in Hopkins, that very card I can no longer find. The other thing that's happened to me is that my laptop no longer works. It's not the cable, it's not the charger, it's definitely the laptop. That got a bit wet. This is very frustrating because I just can't phantom dishing out two to three thousand dollars on a brand new laptop. And the only reason I bring this up is because even though I'm here traveling on my own, I'm not actually alone because there are really good people out there that are sympathetic to the issue and have actually been helping me. People like Michelle who are actually loaning me money to get me to San Pedro. People like Gavin. And since Hopkins, Ali and Jasper who are loaning me their laptops for me to upload days of footage off my SD card into my external hard drive. And I just can't thank them enough because I was just considering taking the big L and just heading back home. And despite of all this happening, I've been having an amazing time and it's because of them. So if you guys are watching this, thank you because um, you've made it possible for me to finish out the rest of this trip. A perfect example of the generosity I felt was earlier I was sitting there feeling pretty down when Christelle, who works at the hostel, came out to me and offered to help so that I could continue to shoot my video. Are you leaving tomorrow? Yeah. And what do you do today? Nothing. Okay. I can um, recommend you and I can give you the $5 dollars to go and come back. <laughs> what is it's, it? It's $2.99 to each. So, am I young man? Thank you. I see you later. Yes, enjoy. So today we're gonna go check out another Mayan ruin. And I'm here with Michael, who's also hey. from New York. So we're gonna take this bus to see Zunantinich. I hope I said that right. Much bigger than the one I saw in San Ignacio. Impressive. It is hot, but we're gonna try to make it up there. <laughs> it's gonna be a struggle, but worth it. Zunantinich, or Maiden of the Rock, in Maya, is an ancient site in western Belize, with Zunan meaning noble lady and Tunich for sculpture. It served as a civic ceremonial center to the Belize Valley region in the late and terminal classic periods, and at its peak, nearly 200,000 people lived here. This place is massive, it's beautiful. One of the staff was saying that the best view of that entire structure is from this point. Wow. This was an awesome day hanging out with Michael. Thank you, Christelle, for recommending this place. It was worth it, well worth it. The next morning, I left the old house hostel. It was a cool place and I've met some really great people there, but it was time to move on to my last destination. I'm catching a bus to Belize City and then getting a water taxi taking me to San Pedro. Jesus, oh, my lower back is killing me. It's difficult to get comfortable with your knees pressed against the seat in front of you in a vehicle that wasn't designed for adults. Oh. Welcome to San Pedro. This place is beautiful. Let's find our hostel. So the vibe that I'm getting is that everyone travels around in these golf carts. 
quickly settled in and started exploring and found a little spot where Eva from Honduras served the best rice and beans. I was there every day. That evening was free movie night at the truck stop. I took the 25 minute walk to the trendy eatery where I chilled before my last big adventure tomorrow. All right, last day of the trip. Well, technically tomorrow is my last day, but I'm gonna save that for my COVID test and relax before my flight the next day. But we're still gonna end with an epic activity, and that is scuba diving, which is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. In college, I was a lifeguard and a swim instructor, and during those courses, we did get to go down to a 15-foot deep pool with a tank to kind of get a sense of what that would be like. But this is totally different because you're in the ocean, you're learning how to balance yourself with a tank on your back, and of course you're dealing with the water pressure the deeper you go in. So my original plan was to come to Belize and get my paddy license here because Belize has the second largest coral reef system in the world next to Australia's Great Barrier Reef. So what better place to do it than here? The course is the four day course. I didn't have four days available, but luckily Dye Shop over here offers a half day tour scuba introduction course. And the best part is I get to learn in the ocean. It's pretty much a private tour. It's just me and Lloyd. When we got to Ho Chan, we had to register with the water police, which makes sense, I guess, if you ever get lost or end up as fish food. But we're ready. When I got in the water, it took me a few seconds to adjust to breathing with the tank, but everything was all good. We then worked on a few drills, but particularly how to release the water from your tank by giving it two pumps because the last thing you want to do is inhale water that may be trapped in a tube while you're deep in the ocean and also how to release water from your mask. Once we pass that, then we can go a little bit deeper. I was actually really surprised that my equilibrium was fine. I always thought that you had to equalize when you started feeling the pressure, but you actually do it beforehand so that as you get lower, you adjust. And that worked out perfectly fine. I didn't really seem to have any problems. So once we got in about 40 feet, there was this whole world that I've never seen before. I saw tons of fish just living their life, doing their thing. And they didn't even budge. They were just like, you're in our world now. And it's just so beautiful to see. We were swimming with schools of fish. There must have been hundreds, hundreds of fish. Lloyd even spotted a shark, and it must have been about 12 feet long. I saw stingrays, and finally, I got to swim alongside sea turtles, which I am the happiest guy in the world now. So yeah, I can call this trip a wrap just, just from that alone. <laughs> Honestly, this is probably one of the most exciting things I've ever done. I could totally see why scuba diving is such an obsession and I would love to come back here to do my paddy license. Um, yeah, what a great way to end the trip. It was a 6 a.m. water taxi back to Belize City to catch my flight going to New York. I've been waiting two long, frustrating years to visit Belize and it exceeded all my expectations. This trip didn't come without its challenges, but you live and you learn. 
and I'll be better prepared for future backpacking experiences. Belize's crystal clear waters, islands, food, culture, history, attractions, and the genuine warmness and kindness of the people are all undoubtedly reasons to visit without hesitation. No problem, but I'm right here to make things happen. From my experience, a major factor in this trip leaving such a lasting impression was because of the people I've met. You may not see them very often in my video, and that's on purpose. I'm documenting my journey. They're having their own experiences, not to have a camera in their face. There were many off-camera conversations and moments with these people that I may never even see again, but their kindness, empathy, and generosity really made an impact on my overall experience, and for that, I thanked them. So if you ever find yourself on an island in Belize and think to yourself, it can be real. This is paradise. Just remember, you better Belize it. Till the next one. Behind the scene with Tony, take one. Okay, I'm swimming sea turtles. Um... Where are you going? If you see this lady, run away. <laughs> Gonna see what the Hopkins is all about. Huh? There goes the drill upstairs and the motorcycle. Any more noise? Okay, let's get drill. Okay, drill now. Okay, I'll wait, I'll wait. Monologuing is pretty hard. Do a karate move. <laughs> Passing you by as you film it. That always happens. What a great... <coughs> Booger. In college, I was a lifeguard and a... One, two, three. If you guys don't know where you're at, Guys don't know? Yeah. Okay, okay. It's guys, it's guys. Okay, okay. Guys. If, if you guys, guys don't, don't know, know where, where you are, are, you're still in Belize. I said, are you said, Addy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if, if you guys, guys don't, don't know, know where you are, are you're still so in Belize. I said, are. No, Addy. If you guys don't know where you are, you're, you're still, still in Belize. 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 You're you're still in Belize. 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 And you better Belize it. <laughs> 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 right.